Hey guys, welcome to The Strong Young Man. If you're fat, then do something now. Do not wait to lose weight. The longer you leave it, the harder it is to change, and the more your health will deteriorate. If you've been trying for a long time to lose fat and have struggled, then this video is for you. If you are overweight, then you may be violating the one primary principle of fat loss, which is to sustain a calorie deficit. However, if you're obese and consuming less than 2,000 calories per day and aren't losing weight, then there may be more to the story. For a healthy individual, sustaining a calorie deficit will result in weight loss, but for the obese, it does not tell the complete story. Obesity is a multifactorial disease. Everyone's daily calorie expenditure differs considerably between individuals based on hormonal factors. Humans do not use energy in the exact same way, in the exact same amounts, universally. Calories out actually vary significantly depending on energy balance, which is controlled entirely by your hormones. Hormones are responsible for regulating everything in your body relating to metabolism, thermoregulation, and fat storage. Consuming a large amount of calories will not cause obesity unless your body doesn't burn these calories as energy. This conversion is regulated entirely by hormones. This is probably the most important concept for the obese to understand, bar none. Pay attention while I repeat this. Your hormones control everything relating to body weight and metabolism. This is why a bodybuilder who is taking steroid hormones in excess can burn fat on 4,000 calories per day. It is why teenagers with raging hormones can eat like a horse and not get fat. It is why you can still gain fat eating only 1,000 calories per day with a hormonal imbalance caused by excessive calorie deprivation. It is why women gain weight during pregnancy. It is why women gain weight after menopause. It's why men and women store fat in different places and in different amounts starting in puberty. It's why you store fat for no other reason when you encounter a significant period of stress in your life. Your hormones control all of this. A healthy individual's body does not like to move very far from homeostasis or its homeostatic set point or set body weight, and so it will burn extra calories as heat if consumed. Hormones will also downregulate the body's temperature in times of famine or sustained calorie deficit as a survival mechanism to maintain homeostasis. The obese have damaged their endocrine system, which causes a change to its homeostatic set point to obese mode, and the body will not want to move very far from this set point. To the obese person who can't lose weight, your hormones, not your total daily calorie consumption, is causing you to store fat. Hormones are linked to what you eat, and so eating bad food, especially a lot of it, can alter your hormones. This happens over a long time and will eventually lead to weight gain, but weight gain is not the direct consequence of eating too much food. Rather, weight gain is the consequence of a hormonal imbalance caused by eating too much bad food. I can't stress this enough. If you are still obese after trying everything, it is almost certain that you have a hormonal imbalance. You need to optimize your hormones before you undertake your weight loss journey using the calorie deficit principle. Insulin, testosterone, estrogen, thyroid, and cortisol all need to be optimized for weight loss to occur. Years of damage to your endocrine system can be corrected, but this does take time. Fortunately, it doesn't take as long to fix this as it did to take to damage it to the same degree. In the beginning, don't focus on the scales. Focus on correcting hormonal imbalances that are preventing you from recomposing your body. The weight will eventually take care of itself. It's going to be a year-long process. Think of it as getting in shape to get in shape. I hate seeing so many people focus only on the scales and lose all hope because the number doesn't go down. You are correcting something that needs to be corrected before you start to lose weight. These are the hormones that affect fat storage. Insulin. Insulin is an anabolic hormone responsible for shuttling nutrients into the body's cells. This includes facilitating the uptake of protein in the form of amino acids and carbohydrates in the form of glucose. This pathway is essential to helping ensure protein enters cells for repair, growth, and basic function. However, insulin is not always a hero. Having chronically high levels of insulin over long periods of time results in weight gain. How do we know this? Injecting insulin into patients results in weight gain without any change to daily calories consumed. Conversely, the absence of insulin, as seen in a type 1 diabetic, results in a patient unable to gain weight, regardless of the calories they consume. This proves the cause equals the effect, because all things being equal, high insulin causes fat storage, and low insulin hinders the body's ability to store fat. Chronically high insulin levels lead to more fat storage through two different pathways. Firstly, chronically high levels of insulin lower the metabolic rate. Secondly, chronically high levels of insulin tell your body to increase its baseline set weight. You need to lower your insulin levels and keep them low for most of the day if you want to correct the hormonal imbalances that are keeping you obese. You can do this in two ways, eliminate carbohydrates or intermittent fasting. Combining these two techniques together will yield a multiplication factor which will shortcut your journey to resetting your hormones. Long-term implementation of a no-carb or ketogenic diet can alter other hormones. The improved liver health gained by a reduction of insulinemia allows the liver to produce more sex hormone binding globulin, which can bind up testosterone so that it can't be used. High levels of sex hormone binding globulin is an indicator of health, but it binds up your testosterone, and this can affect other vital functions in the body relating to weight loss. 
It can also downregulate your metabolism through a reduction in thyroid stimulating hormone and hence T3, your active thyroid hormone. This is because periods of low carbohydrate availability for our ancestors meant food was scarce. Both of these hormones are something that you want to keep an eye on. Cortisol. Known as the stress hormone, cortisol will raise blood glucose levels and subsequently insulin. This is the body's survival mechanism in response to danger and stress. It serves to bring carbohydrates into the blood for extra energy as part of the fight or flight response. Acute exposure to cortisol is healthy for the body. However, chronic exposure to cortisol will mean blood glucose levels remain high over time, and this will result in high levels of insulin in the blood. Essentially, chronic exposure to stress causes a hormonal imbalance that is similar to chronically high insulin levels. To prevent this from happening, you need to engage in regular de-stressing activities and do everything you can to eliminate major life stresses. Refer back to episode 39 for more information on how to do this. Testosterone. Testosterone is an anabolic steroid hormone that promotes muscle growth, increases metabolism, directly and indirectly, and is also responsible for lower levels of body fat on the stomach and chest. For men, testosterone decreases as you age, starting in your mid-20s, but you can slow down this decrease with healthy lifestyle practices. As a last resort, hormone replacement therapy can be used as a healthy option to restore optimal hormone levels in conjunction with these improved lifestyle choices. Estrogen. Estrogen in men is a hormone predominantly derived from testosterone. For men, estrogen is essential for muscle recovery, bone and joint health, libido, and also for brain and heart health, but high estrogen will make you fat, moody, and emotional. Estrogen is the reason why healthy women have higher levels of body fat than healthy men. 20% of estrogen in men is synthesized directly from the testes, and the other 80% is synthesized from the aromatization of testosterone. This aromatization of testosterone to estrogen takes place in the brain, skin, bone, and fat cells. Brain, skin, and bone cells remain mostly constant throughout your life, but fat cells do not. The more fat cells you have, the more estrogen your body will synthesize. High levels of estrogen in the blood will cause the body to secrete less testosterone to ensure that less estrogen can be synthesized. High estrogen with low testosterone is a hormone panel that closely resembles a female's hormonal distribution. This will result in you developing bitch tits and storing extra body fat on the hips and thighs. To reduce your estrogen naturally, reduce your body fat, and reduce your exposure to estrogen-like substances that disrupt your endocrine system. Thyroid hormones. T3, or triiodothyronine, is the active hormone produced by the thyroid gland, which regulates body temperature and supports the breakdown of fat for energy production. A sufficient intake of iodine will ensure this hormone remains in balance. Unless you have a deficiency of this mineral through bad dietary choices, it is unlikely that your thyroid hormones are imbalanced. To ensure you meet your requirement for iodine, be sure to consume adequate seafood, liver, eggs, and dairy. To put it all together, obesity is a time-dependent disease caused over decades of hormonal imbalance. The longer your body has been in a damaged state, the longer it will take to recover. This is because of the positive feedback mechanism of high insulin levels and insulin resistance. If you've been obese for 30 years, you cannot expect the body to change in a week. It's realistic to expect the change to occur within six months. If you're obese, then lower your expectations. Good things take time, and it will be worth every second that you spend on it. The fastest way to correct your hormones is to combine intermittent fasting with a ketogenic or a carnivore diet. A healthy version of this diet, consuming between 2,000 and 2,500 calories per day, depending on your body weight, is a great place to start to correct your hormones. If you sustain metabolic damage from too many low-calorie diets, it may help to slowly increase your calories by about 100 per week, as long as it takes to get into this window. Over time, as your hormones slowly correct themselves, you'll begin to see results. Just stay the course. Your hormones will need to correct themselves before you can begin weight loss. In other words, it's not losing weight to get healthy. It's getting healthy to lose weight. You aren't who you were the last time you tried improving your health. These suggestions are likely not the same information that you had the last time you tried to lose weight. It's time to move on from your past failures and conquer your fear of succeeding, starting now. Understand that your taste buds only live for approximately 21 days. As your taste buds become more familiar with different foods, they'll become more discerning in what they want. The solution becomes much easier the longer you do it. You just need to get the habits formed in the beginning. Every diet that has ever worked manipulates the aforementioned biology. You just need to stay the course long enough to see things change. Thanks for watching today's episode. In episode 56, I'll go through the power of demonstrating rather than explicating. Subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when it drops. Catch you then.